All right, here we go. Everybody pay attention. It's recording. So, guys, please be quiet. All right. Um, so I know I have Illustrator open here. I'm gonna I'm gonna use a little bit of that. But we're gonna go over some of the basics of Photoshop. Like I said, um, I don't know if I told this class, but next class, I'm gonna issue you guys your your Photoshop books. Uh, they're Adobe Classroom in a in a book lessons. And we're gonna be doing some projects based off of some of the chapters in there. Uh, I don't like doing the book as the assignments because I have to be honest, it's pretty boring. Um, but this this semester we are gonna try and, and do the books. We'll talk about that later. It's not gonna be difficult. There's some lessons you can download. They're like modules, um, but I find that to be very boring and not very exciting, right? And you guys know I'm not that teacher that just gives you a bunch of boring modules to do on your own. Uh, I like to do real life stuff, right? Okay, so some of the first things that we wanna take care of um, in, in uh, Photoshop is, how is Photoshop different from Illustrator? What do you guys think? What are the main, what's the main difference? Anybody? What do you guys think? Now that you know a little bit of Illustrator, right? What is the main difference? Anybody know? Anybody want to take a guess? What about the type of files that they are that you can see physically? Anybody? No? Maybe? All right. Okay. So I'm going to kind of explain here. And if you're going to do any kind of graphic design or video or anything in the creative realm, uh, there's technical terms for everything. Would you guys agree? All right. Now, in the world of computers and graphics, there's two basic types. All right, and you will need to know these. Anybody heard of these? Yeah. Okay, which one have you heard of, Tony? Both. Okay. Uh, and those of you guys who don't remember, we did kind of cover this at the very beginning. Some of you guys weren't here yet, but Illustrator is what we call vector graphics, right? Now, what is the difference between raster graphics and vector graphics? Oops. Well, the difference is one is pixel-based and one is vector-based. Now, I know they don't call it pixel graphics, even though they probably should, but this was the original term that all the computer scientists came up with, right? And we'll talk about that a little bit later, why they call it that. But there's two different types of graphics, right? Raster is pixel-based. Let me scale this down. And vector is vector based and what i mean by vector now that you guys know illustrator you know that you can draw points and lines and paths right or segments right and what's cool about vector is uh, when you scale up the artwork what happens does it does it pixelate what do you guys what have you guys experienced in in illustrator does it get pixelated or pixelized Huh? No, right? We can print something out the size of the banner and it'll print out real nice, right? It'll be nice and sharp, right? Anything you draw in Illustrator, right, with a pen tool is sharp edged and it will always be, right? If I draw just a blob there and I go and I zoom in, do you see any pixels, right? Is the line sharp and crisp? Can I create almost blade like graphics like this right almost needle needle sharp right like that and zoom in on this and it's going to be sharp is it not right yes no anybody yeah so that's vector right we can use typography that way right fonts we can do a lot of stuff what and it, it can do a few pixel-like things. And now I showed you last semester, there's even 3D in it now, right? Some 3D stuff, all right? So over here, we've got pixel-based. Now, the problem with pixel-based is 
there's issues with what we call in the biz resolution. Anybody know what resolution means? Anyone? How about a guess? What is resolution? When you talk about video on a TV or the quality of pictures on your phone. Anyone? What's resolution? Huh? Anyone? Uh, I might be wrong, but it's the amount of pixels that come out. Yeah, so every cell phone that you've ever had in your life and are gonna have, right? Every video camera, I don't know if anybody has a video camera in here except for Tony, right? A, a actual dedicated video camera, right? Or the new cameras that are mirrorless or DSLRs that take video, they have sensors in them, yeah? And these digital sensors capture the information and make it digital, yes? Right? How many of you guys remember as little kids watching TV on, on a TV? Are you guys all flat screened or did you ever see a regular TV? Like maybe at your grandparents, like a regular TV that was big and bulky, a tube. Yeah, okay. You're probably some of the last people to see those. I still have one somewhere in my house under a cabinet or something. All right. But the resolution of television, right, uh, changed dramatically in the last 15 years, right? Now we have, and you see all these uh, TVs. Some of you guys may have one, right? They're, pretty much everybody has a flat screen at this point, right? Um, and they started off with uh, 1080i, which was what considered high resolution in video. And it's been going on forever, right? So resolution is the amount of pixels, right, available to view, whether it's a, a static image, right, or just a photo or video, right? Have you guys, or maybe some of you guys have, right? We have uh, ultra high def TVs now where some of the, the signals they send us on the videos are so high resolution, they look so crisp and it looks almost real, right? Yeah, that's just going to increase, I mean, when you guys are, are full adults and have your own place and start buying your own electronics and stuff, you guys are going to have the ultimate high res stuff, high resolution. It's it's coming for you guys, you know? All right. I don't even want to buy another TV. And it's like good enough, but you guys like, you know, high quality stuff. So that is the resolution, right? How many pixels does the device capture? Right. Uh, so, the thing is, we can manipulate this resolution, right? Using graphics programs like we have. All right. So in print, this is different, all right? Print design. What is print design? We've been doing it all last semester. What do you guys think? That's literally what we call it, print graphic design. Huh? What do you guys think? What is print graphic design? What have we been doing in Illustrator? Huh? Yeah, so we're making stuff that we can eventually, the output is to print it out, yes? Right, in this physical space that we that we exist in, right? Uh, what have I shown you guys that, that we use a lot of print in? We did a Stormtrooper thing too. What did we do together? Yeah, packaging, right? The stuff that the 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 boxes, the packaging that all our stuff comes in, right? Do you think that'll ever go away? No. 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 Maybe way in the future, like a thousand years. <laughs> if we're still around, right? And maybe in a thousand years, right? We'll just have like, I don't know. Uh, one of those machines like a microwave and you just tell it what to make you and it and it molecularly makes it, right? But I don't know. Hopefully the technology gets to that point, right? Who knows? But for now, I'd say at least in your lifetime and the next couple hundred years, they're still going to make stuff and it's got to be put in stuff, yes? And it's got to be put on a shelf and you got to go out of your house or cave and go buy it, yes? All right. Or have it delivered, whatever. Okay. So print graphic design, very different. Check this out. And I don't know if you guys remember, but the minimum resolution is 300 pixels 
per inch. All right, everybody watching over here? Sorry. So for print, we talked about things being high res, 300 pixels per inch. You don't have to do this, I'm just showing you. If you happen to be an illustrator, when you create a new, and I told you guys, let's go to print, right? Everybody remembers this, you go to inches, CMYK, four color process for print. And notice on raster effects, here's that word. Everybody see it? You may have not really paid attention to it, but it's there. Raster effects, that means anything that is converted from Illustrator to a raster, right? When we can export as JPEG. When we do PDF, that's not raster. That's still vector. But we can place photos inside of Illustrator. We can place photographic textures into Illustrator, right? And it has to be able to handle that, right? So 300 pixels per inch is the standard for anything printed. Anybody know the standard for anything not printed? Anybody? How about stuff on the internet? How about a picture from the internet? Let me show you guys. Now it's changed in the last, uh, I don't know, seven, eight years. We used to only need low res stuff for the internet, especially pictures. Let's see, um, iPhone, newest iPhone. What's the newest iPhone? Anybody know? Anybody care? Nobody's into their phones here? Yeah, it's so hard to keep up, right? It's so hard to keep up. So check this out. If you go to the internet and you do an image search, look at all these images, right? Number one, all these images, because they're online, is this print? Is this in the physical world? Or is this online only? It's online only. I can tell you every single image, well, unless people that don't know what they're doing, is an RGB image, that's red, green, blue, right? And most likely if I click on one of these and I right click and I save image as, right? And I'm copying this file to my computer and I'm gonna call it iPhone, whatever. This one happens to be a transparent PNG. I can see there's no background, right? If I download this picture, oh, it's not even gonna let me. It's a, it's not a web one, let's see. Oh, it's one of these things. So when it says web, oh, this is this is the actual file. See, that's an actual PNG. So that's a good example of what not to do because I went to the little thumbnail, not the actual link, and now here's the real file, okay? So watch this. Notice it even has, remember how I'm always bugging you guys to name your files correctly and put your initials and all that stuff? Some of you guys keep ignoring me. Whoever created this file, and somebody did, right? A person just like you and me, they actually put the pixel dimensions on it. Do you see why it's important? I don't I don't agree with this period here. The underscore is good in that period. But notice somebody physically named this file this, and this is telling you the pixel dimensions of this image. Why? Because these are web designers, right? And they need to make sure that everything's the right size so it shows up the right size on this website, whoever built the website, okay? Now I was gonna say, People are still responsible for all this, but that conversation we had earlier, I hate to tell you, but the AI is coming in and there's gonna be a day in the near future where you can just tell it to make a website for you. And you just gather the images and load them up and write in what the text is. You'll see some of the stuff we're gonna do in a few weeks with the AI stuff. It's kind of scary, but that's what I was telling you guys. You guys need to be prepared for the new work environment that you guys are gonna be in. Okay, so here's the picture, yes? That I just downloaded. And I, I've never downloaded this one before, but if I open it with Photoshop and I go to image and I go to image size, you don't have to do this, I'm just showing you. Notice, what is the resolution of this image? Yeah. Just about any static image on the internet, whether it's a tennis shoe, uh, some anime thing that somebody posted that you're looking at, it's going to be 72 pixels per inch. That is the standard resolution for images on the internet. Anybody know why? Why wouldn't we do 300 here? Anyone? I'm going to tell you. At the inception of the internet, the computer scientists, the awesome nerds that control everything, right, figured out that Number one, you wanted to have an RGB image because if you notice, there's CMYK, cyan, magenta, yellow, black, right? Four channels or four colors. And if you can 
make it less, right? Remember, red, green, blue, that is anything that gives off light. Your cell phone, when you go to the movies, right now this projection, it's only three colors creating the illusion of all these other ones, right? Red, green, and blue are giving us this image, right? Even though there's pinks and gradations and all these other tones, but it, they're really made out uh, physically with light, right? With photons, that's what we're seeing. So they figured out that the internet and websites, remember we're talking early on, right? In the eighties, even some people started in the seventies, but in the eighties, and they noticed that it would take longer for a computer to display images with all the extra information in a CMYK format, or it would look weird. So they figured out that RGB, right? Worked better for internet. And since you're not printing it on a package, you're just viewing it on a screen, 72 was good enough for the human eye, all right? It doesn't have to be 300. Now, having said that, nowadays, like I said, video is very different. These are just static images, right? But video has changed a lot to where, have you ever seen a, a YouTube video or maybe even uploaded one yourself that you took early on and your phone camera or whatever camera you used was not very good quality, right? You can go on YouTube and find old, old videos and they look crappy. Why? Because the resolution wasn't there yet. Now we have HD. Now we have ultra high definition TVs. We need high quality video that has high resolution, right? Anybody want to maybe work in the film industry? All right. All the cameras they use, guys, are super top high resolution cameras. And you can see the different qualities in the shows that you guys watch, right? Even some YouTubers have, you know, cameras that cost like $100,000 each, all right? Because they can afford it. The, the quality, the resolution is so crazy and it's only going to get higher, right? Okay? All right, so everybody understands so far? Raster, pixel, right? But I have to show you guys these things, right? So any image you download from the internet, most likely will be 72 pixels per inch. Now, in the old days, some people would mistakenly upload the right, wrong type when people are learning how to do websites the old fashioned way. And sometimes you could you could get lucky and find uh, high res images that somebody put up by accident, all right? But anyway, that's, that's what I'm talking about. And the last thing I'm gonna show you here before we take a break, if I zoom in on a pixel-based image, what do you see? Huh? Autumn, what do you see? Yeah. So literally, when you say there's 72 pixels per inch, you could actually measure an inch. And I'm going to prove it to you. Watch. I'm going to go to Illustrator. You guys watching? Anybody? And we'll take our break right now. Put this in inches. Create. I'm going to create a one inch. Everybody in here should know how to do this. A one inch, you don't have to do this, I'm just showing you, a one inch by one inch square, no fill, red stroke only. Yes? I copy it from Illustrator, and I'll paste it into this guy. Oops, sorry. Paste. Uh, let's do pixels. So yes, you can copy stuff from Illustrator and paste it into Photoshop. And we're going to be doing that with this assignment. Now check this out. Everybody looking? If I zoom in enough and I move this guy, I'll try to find an area here. You could literally zoom in and from here to the end of this is exactly 72 pixels. Each little square that it's kind of hard to see. I'm in the wrong area here. I need to be in a dark area. Let's see, up on the screen. It's because on my monitor, it shows it to me. I guess right around here. So it literally means that, okay? There, you can see a little bit of the pixels, right? So from here, I'm not gonna do it because it takes forever, but I have done it. And if you want to do it on your own, that's cool. From here to there is exactly 72 of these little boxes. All right. 
It really is, right? Okay, and I know you guys understand there's a lot of math going on behind anything digital, right? What we see is not really what's there, you know, kind of like the matrix. There are just ones and zeros, right? We have a visual representation of, of the digital information that's really there, okay? All right, um, let's take our break and then we'll come back. Let me pause this. Oh, that's that's sharing, that's pausing, pausing. All right, we're back here. Um, so yeah, raster, vector, right? Uh, like I said, think about anything that you've ever taken a picture of, right? It is pixel-based. All right, so everybody listen up. So if you guys remember in Illustrator, when you make a new document, everybody watching up here? Yeah, when you make a new document, it always asks you and you see this top thing, look, notice it has mobile, web, print, right? We were doing print a lot, film and video, art and illustration, more templates. So what we're gonna do today is gonna be mobile-based. What is mobile-based, anybody? Yeah. Mobile-based graphics, your phone, a tablet, right? Would you guys agree? All right, but mostly phones. Okay, this is Illustrator. Check this out. It has presets, right, for all different types of phones, right? Now, the phone market is obviously changing constantly, right? But if you never paid attention to this, why do you think they would have these formats, these templates, these documents? ready to go why what do you guys think anyone no one all right do we need graphics for your phones for all the content that you see right for every little icon you press for every app right how about when you install an app what pops up What's the first thing that pops up when you want to install an app? Like the like authentication. Download it. Yeah, but what do you see? The icon. Okay, what else do you see? Is there like a little page that pops up that tells you what the app is, who oh, makes it? When you, when you want to download an app off the app store. Yeah, it says that gives you details. It's good. Does something pop up on your screen that tells you who the company is, who developed it, when it was created. You don't pay attention, do you guys? Okay. What I'm saying is when you hit something on your phone that's an app or you're installing an app, these graphic interfaces, these things that let us understand what we're doing pop up, right? And then you hit the little button and you say install, yes? Anybody? Okay. That little install button, I know it's not physical, but it exists on your phone, right? So the designers who design all that stuff, that's UX and UI. Anybody ever heard of this stuff? UX and UI? Anyone? First row, Vero? Anybody? Anna, UX and UI design? Rito? Nobody? Okay. So user interface, right? Everything that we see on a computer, since you guys have been staring at a, at a DVD player when you were babies, right? So they keep you busy. Anybody? Anybody remember that? Right. Okay. What we see is a graphic interface, right? We don't see the ones and zeros like in the matrix, right? The, if anybody knows the reference, right? We don't see that. We see a graphic interface, right? No different than if we had this here in the physical world, right? So the designers and programmers need to know the pixel dimensions or the screen size of your phone, right? And they use all their coding and, and super nerd intelligence to make it work flawlessly on your phone. Every app, when you order something from McDonald's, all that stuff has to fit within the pixel dimensions of your phone screen, right? And there's so many different phones and they're always changing that they need to know the resolutions or else the things don't fit on the, on the screen right. And I don't know if any guys ever actually go to any websites anymore, but when you go to a website on your laptop or on a desktop and you go to it on your phone, sometimes it doesn't work quite right or it looks weird or you can't access some stuff because it's constantly changing 
on mobile uh, as far as how it shows up on your screen because it's not the same size as a big computer screen, right? So it has to be a different version, right? Or what they create as a website has to have multiple versions within the coding that are going to work on different formats and different resolution size phone screens, all right? There's a lot of science, computer science behind it. Check out Apple iPad Pro on this one. Look how many pixels. 2048 by 2732. That's a lot of information compared to, check this out and don't laugh. Where's my iPhone 7? <laughs> you guys see my iPhone 7 or my 7 Plus or anybody that still has an 8? Look at the pixels, right? The resolution has changed and is going to continue to change, all right? Uh, look at this Google Pixel 2. Oops. That is a uh, standard high definition. Huh? I'm sure there are. There are. But check it out. 1080 is what we call high, res high, uh, high definition in video. So your phone has to be 1080 pixels minimum. Yeah, there's some Samsungs right here. There's one right here. Okay. Now, here's what we're going to do. I just wanted to show you guys that that exists there. Guess what? In Photoshop, if you're already in Photoshop, let's do Command N for new document. And check this out. There's a um, mobile function. And it also has these preset, right? Does everyone see iPhone X? Because that's the one we're going to do. Everybody see iPhone X? First row, everybody got it? Yes? No? First row, yeah? Somebody nod over there. Frito? Photoshop. This is Photoshop. Yeah? Sherry, you got it? Okay. Julian? You got it? Okay, last row. Everybody got it? Notice what it says. What's the resolution on all of them? Yes. All right? This is already preset. 1125 by 2436. Say okay. Your GPU settings, that's me. Just say okay. Everybody there? Yes? No? You should have this blank, tall document like this. No? Everybody? Oh. Speak to me. Yes? Okay. Now, before we start actually making stuff, right, you're going to ask me, well, why are we doing this? And you'll see. Um, the particular phone that you have, if you go to the info or you look it up real quick, Right? You can actually go to the interwebs. Check this out. I want everybody to, if you even know what your phone is, you can look it up. Um, what is your phone, um, Autumn? What phone do you have? iPhone 14 plus screen size. Sorry, pixel dimensions and pixels. Just type pixels. So you can pretty much find anything on the internet as far as <laughs> what, what it is. Check it out. So it's 1284 by 2778. You guys see it? All right. So any, any phone that you can encounter or run into, you can find the dimensions in pixel, right? So you would, if you couldn't find it in Photoshop as a, as a standard template, you could actually make it, right? 1284 by 2778, Command N, right? And you would go to web, I mean mobile, sorry. And now you would fix that here, 1284. Right? You don't have to do this. I'm just showing you. You can look it up by 2778. And the reason you want it to be exact is we're going to create stuff that goes on particular type phones. All right? So, uh, what's that? You could if you want. Yeah, if you want to. Yeah. You don't have to right now. All right? So, we're back to this. All right? So, I just wanted to prove to everybody that you can find the pixel dimensions of your phone, whether it's old and crusty like mine, or whether you have the newest 
nicest one, all right? So this is still our preset that we chose, which was um, the iPhone, what was it? iPhone X mobile. Okay, now we're actually gonna get started here, okay. So what we're gonna do today also, and I'm just gonna use Illustrator, is there's two types of editing in Photoshop. All right, and you guys need to know this. There's non-destructive, can't spell, there. So there's non-destructive editing, and then there's destructive editing. And this is referring to pixels, right, in a raster image, OK? And what I mean by this is there are techniques in Photoshop that you can do that are totally undoable, in other words, what we're going to do today is non-destructive for the most part. And then there's stuff where you go in there and you delete stuff and erase things and use the clone tools and remove somebody from the background of a photo, somebody who's like photo bombing or fixing somebody's red eyes and a bad photo or just editing in general, right? So that's destructive. That means you've changed the pixels and you can't undo that change. But we're gonna try non-destructive today, right? Uh, anybody here ever done any graffiti art or painted a mural on a wall or painted something on their wall in their room? Anybody? Okay. So nice. Now, when you paint on something physical, right? You can say that's destructive because once you start mixing the paints, you can't really undo it. Or say you spray paint a wall. The only way you can undo it is paint over it again, right? Okay. So the relationship is that in in computers, when we do raster image um, manipulation, there's the same thing, right? Once you spray onto in Photoshop a color onto other pixels, they've been manipulated, they've been painted over, right? It's not very physical in the sense, but it does happen in inside of the computer program, and you'll see what I mean. All right. Today we're going to try non-destructive. All right. Okay. You guys ready? Now we're going to do it very quick today because I want you guys to get started and start feeling how this works. Now remember, Photoshop is not vector. It is not going to react like Illustrator. There are some commands that come across and they're the same, but remember we are not working with paths yet. There, there is a way to do some vector looking stuff inside of Photoshop but everything you're doing in Photoshop is pixel based, right? So if you have your one photo ready, uh, which one was mine? I thought I had it. Hold on, I have it hidden here. Make sure you have your one photo and you created your, your. Uh, sorry, let me close all this, hold on. Oh, here it is. All right, and have them both next to each other like this. Yes, you guys got it? No? Maybe you guys watching. All right. Now notice the first thing we want, Tony, I need you to pay attention. Window layers. If you don't have them already, window layers. Okay. And here's something I'm going to tell you guys. You must use layers in Photoshop, period. Some of you guys try to get away with it in Illustrator and I would go over and I go, where are your layers? And you'd be like, ah. Oh. Try doing that with Photoshop, you're not gonna be able to because anytime you bring something in, it creates a new layer automatically, all right? Everybody good? Yes? All right, click right here on layer where it says layer one and you're gonna call this background. Yes? Anybody? We're good? All right, now, 
what happens is, everybody watching? Tony, I need you to pay attention. If you go up to image and you check image size on the white template, notice what it says, right? In inches, it is 15.625 by 33 at 72 pixels per inch, all right? This is truly a physical size, all right? Everybody looking at that one? Yes? This is the white one that we created, the iPhone 10 or iPhone X, yes? Now, if you go to any one of your pictures that you have open and you go to image size, image, image size, you're gonna notice most likely it's gonna be a lot bigger. No? Hannah, what does yours say? Whatever you took. The, the width and the height. The resolution should be 72. But what's the width and the height on yours, Hannah? Oh, okay. All right. Beto, how about yours? On your photo. Yeah. Image, image size. What does it say? Beto? What's the width? 42. The width is 42? And the height? Oh, wow. That's that's pretty big, good. Uh, 42. How about, uh, Autumn, what's yours on the image size? What's that? Oh, wow. That's huge. Very interesting. Yeah. How about uh, Brianna's? What does yours say? Go to your photo, go to your photo of uh, K2SO. You have it open in Photoshop? Yeah. Okay, go to file up on top and go to image, image size, image, image size. It's like the second one, image, the top layer says image, and then image size. What does it say? Width and height. The width is 42 to the height. Oh, wow. Yeah. Some of you guys with the near phones, you have a lot of information. All right. Okay. So having said that, it's not the same size as this. Would you guys agree? Right. So here's what happens. Check this out. Everybody look. I'm going to go to this one, my picture, and I'm going to find the layer. And you're going to see a little preview. Don't worry about the lock and stuff. Everybody watching? This is one way to get this image over here. You click it and hold it and drag it into the other one. Now, because they are physically different sizes, it's gonna look way bigger, right, than your document for the iPhone X, right? Now notice on these black areas around it, can you see the image? Like in Illustrator, what do you guys see? No, right? Check this out, don't be fooled. In Photoshop, the image is there, but you will not see it, right, beyond the actual document edges. You can't. It will not let you, all right? So all you can do is move it around, and also you can scale it by going to the edges, right? And on the new Photoshop, you should just be able to scale it down, right? If you hold the option, it'll scale it from the center out. Do not use shift in Photoshop because that will stretch it, right? No stretching, no stretching of photos. If you do it by accident, do command Z, but you got to zoom out, command minus, and then open up the document like this. So you see a lot of black space around your document, right? So you can see that. Go to your, your move tool and you should be able to see the edges like this. And then you can use option and shift. I mean, option only, sorry. And scale the image so it fits how you want it. It doesn't have to be anything in particular right now. We just want it to, to be what you want in the image to be there in the middle. All right. Okay. Okay. So just be aware that you won't see any, everything, right? It could have come in like this and you're like, oh, well, I don't see my whole image. Well, you just gotta scale it, All right? Cool. Everyone able to do that first row? If you're having issues, let me know real quick. You were supposed to just drag it, yeah? 
Okay, zoom out. Command minus, all the way out. And then get your tools. And then open the document. Click that. Yeah, if you don't see the the, the scaling, do command T transform. What's going on? Why don't we get that? Drag your file from the other one into this one. Come on, guys. Come on. And if you don't see the, the previews to, to scale it, do command T. That should show you. You have to make sure you have the right layer selected. Okay. Right? And you scale it however you want. Do not stretch it. No stretching the photos or doctor or text. I'm going to actually have you guys do the oath later about not stretching fonts or, or photos. Because I see an oath and you have to say it out loud and hold up your right hand. I do. I make you guys do it. I have it recorded. I'm not going to record you guys physically. I'll just record you guys saying it. So I can I can play it back for you. All right, you guys ready? Everybody? Yes? No? All right. All right, we're almost done here for today. Okay. All right, so check this out. We're gonna go to the internet. Everybody follow along here. We gotta do this quick. All right. Brands of the world. And again, I'm doing this. Because just like on your final exam, I told you sometimes you'll have stuff that you want to do or maybe your, your product that you're making is for people that are going to buy your stuff and you may not necessarily like it, right? I'll give an example. Uh, Brianna, you like, like tattoo art, right? We talked about it. Uh, I can't remember the guy's name. But there's one amazing tattoo artist who doesn't have any tattoos. But yeah, he's like one of the top ones. I can't remember the guy's name, all right? I have to look it up. So some people say, well, how can it be, I don't want a tattoo from this guy because he doesn't have any himself, right? But I know that's like a, a weird thing, but it is possible, right? So if you're creating stuff for people, what if you find that a lot of people are interested in stuff, especially as you get older, Right. If you figure out all oh, these young people are so into this and you create artwork or designs related to that and you really honestly don't really care about it, but it makes you money. It makes you a living. Right. And. I think that happens a lot in, in design in products. Right. People really aren't into it. But guess what? People like that stuff and they know that it sells. Right. And guess what? We need money to live our lives. We need money to buy the stuff we think we need, right? Um, so sometimes you're you're running into those things where you may not like something, right? And that's gonna kind of force you guys to do that that car race poster, but that doesn't mean that you can't get good at it, right? And do it and have people buy your stuff or it be interested in, it, right? So okay, let's go here. Let's go to Star Wars, and we're gonna type Star Wars logo. Now, I do have to say this, and especially in the video, when you make fan art type stuff like this, right, and then you try to sell it even digitally, right, I'm not saying you're doing knockoff uh, hoodies and t-shirts and keychains, even though people are getting away with some of that stuff. Anybody here 3D print anything? Right? Okay. So a few years back when 3d printing got even more popular and more attainable to people people started buying their maker bot 3d printers and they would design a hundred percent from scratch in 3d programs say a yoda figure right they created it a hundred percent themselves it's not an existing yoda action figure but they made it in a 3d program then they print it and then they start maybe selling them like that raw or they sell them already painted Right, and they started selling them on Etsy, and then Disney came along and started suing everybody. What? Now, 
a lot of these have been taken to court because they say, well, I'm just making fan art and I'm not, I'm not getting an existing figure that Disney has created and copying it and selling it. This is my own. So it's gotten a really gray area what's legal and what isn't. All right. And we'll talk about that stuff more. All right. Again, some of you guys love anime. Some of you guys love, like you were talking earlier about the stuff you grew up with. Right. What is the legal uh, area where you can create something as a, as fan art and be able to sell it. Right. It's tough. It's tough because ultimately the people that, uh, that enforce these things, like say Disney, the problem is Disney has a lot of money. And they have a lot of lawyers, right? They even send those people here to El Paso and to the flea markets and to they find out who's selling stuff online that is not licensed. They do. But say that you come up with something, it's up to you to protect your copyright of your creations. And that's a little bit more difficult when you're not a billion dollar company like Disney. Would you guys agree? All right. So what I'm saying is be careful what you do. Because you can infringe on people's copyrights, all right? So anyway, let's go to this one. Everybody see this one? Did everybody find this one? I want everybody to do the same one. Classic gold Star Wars logo, yes? Anybody? First row, did you guys find it? Because I need you to download it real quick. I agree, download. Uh, This one, the Star Wars gold one. All I, all I did was type Star Wars logo, and it was the second one on mine. It's got a nice little gold gradient. Yes? Everybody? Yeah? We're good? Yeah. Yes? What do you mean? You download it. No, look, you're not looking up here and listening? Oh, come on. All right. No. Well, yeah, it does. Okay. So go to Galactic Empire also. Download this one. It's just like a... This is for you guys that have the, the Stormtrooper one. And if you don't, it's fine. We just got to use some graphics. All right. Now, this one's pretty generic, right? There's no copyright on this. Could some of you guys in here already have the skills in Illustrator to redraw this and make your own version? Yeah, you could. Yeah. All right. Just hit agree, download. If it tells you, you can only download so many a day. Sometimes you have to turn your computer off. All right. Uh, you don't have to create. You, you just got to click on it, agree, and hit download. It should. All right, everybody there? Just those two for now. Yes, no? Yeah? All right, now let's go to another website and let's go to, um, uh, I can't remember the name right now. Hi, Res. Let me, let me tell you which one. Uh, hold on, hold on. Oh, there it is. Wildtextures.com. Yeah, find that one. We're almost done. We're almost done, guys. We'll stop in another 15 minutes or so. You guys ready? Wildtextures.com. All right. This is where we collect some some assets, right? Some images. Now we're doing this because we want to do this very quick and everybody wants to use the same ones, right? So let's go through here and um, let's download this one, the vertical wooden boards. Now please watch. Because what? This one down here, it's got vertical wooden boards with yellow, peeling yellow paint. Now Please look, because there's a correct way and the wrong way. Some people will go like this, and they'll just drag this. No, we want the nice, high-quality one, so you got to click on it, 
It takes a few seconds to load. They show you some examples of it being used. And then down here at the bottom, notice we've got some, the actual image. This is 100% free. And hit download. That's going to give us the actual giant image. It's going to load. You got to be a little bit patient. But this way you're getting the actual high res file. This is no different than if any of you guys took your phone or a high res camera like Tony's and you went and took a picture of your grandpa's uh, shed in the backyard, a close up of this. All right. Once it's loaded, right click, save image as. Put it in your downloads, put it in your documents, wherever you want. I'm going to put mine in my folder for images for practice. Boom. Save. Okay, that's how you download them from that website. Okay, again, again, pay attention. A lot of people, they just go, oh, I like this one. And they, no, this is not the high res version right there. All right, that's just a loaded up thumbnail on the website. Okay, everybody got that one? Yes? Anybody? Hello? All right, and then the last one, go here where it says bokeh. Anybody ever heard of this in photography? Tony? Like like when you get a lot of uh, lens flares and stuff like that. Yeah. All right. So let's get this one. This Xmas lights bouquet. Download those two. Download those two. Download. Boom. Beautiful. Right click. Save image as. All right. Cool. Everybody got it. Yes. No. Anybody need help? All right. You guys got to really strive to be able to do this. Super easy. And again, right now we're using stuff from the internet. I'm not saying you should all the time, but how we talked about earlier, if you're trying to make a product, you got to find the easiest way. And you have all these things at your fingertips, right? And a lot of this stuff is copyright free because it's free, all right? Okay, you guys ready? Cool. Look how easy. So let's go back to our Photoshop file. Yes, everybody? Anyone? All right, I'm back in my Photoshop file. Everybody look, Command O, open. I'm gonna go to the two wild textures I just downloaded. I select both with my shift. They're in my folder, they're in your downloads folder. Find out where they went. That's why you need to know when you download stuff. And I'm going to open both. Command O, open. Boom, there's one. Yes? Everybody watching? Yes, no, maybe. All right. Huh? You okay? Where'd my other one go? Oh, it's right here. Check it out. So then I move them open like this. Everybody watching? Can you guys see? And I'm going to get the planks and I open it in Photoshop and I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to grab that layer and I'm just going to drag it into my other document and I'm going to move it around. It's ginormous too. I'm going to do the same thing with the bouquet one. Drag that right here. So now notice how in my file, it automatically makes new layers, right? I'm going to put on here, I'm going to call this one bouquet. I'm going to call this one paint. And then I have my, on mine, my trooper. Cool. So look at my layers. This is what you should have. All we did was drag them. Do not select, do not copy paste. Just drag the layers into one, into your document. Now, it's gonna be not showing you the other stuff, right? It's gonna cover stuff up and that's fine. You can minimize the other ones once you're done so it's not confusing. Everybody there? Yes, no, anyone? Okay, I can go, I can pause. Now check this out, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this and then I'll pause. Now here's the problem for the difference between Photoshop and Illustrator. If you start moving stuff around and you see nothing happening, that means 
that you have a layer selected that you cannot see. So right now I was trying to move the bokeh and it wouldn't move. Why? Because I did not have that layer selected. Now, if I select the, the paint layer, then that moves. If I select the trooper or whatever image you guys have, then that moves. Oops. I, I rotated it by accident there. Okay. You see what I mean? So make sure you have the right layer selected or else nothing's going to be happening. All right. So if it looks like nothing's happening and you have the move tool over here in your toolbar, that's because you don't have the right layer selected. Now, do you remember in Illustrator, how would you move your picture layer to be the top layer? What do you guys think? Now, you don't necessarily have to do this, but I'm showing you. Because you want the trooper at the bottom. Anybody? How would we move them? Yes, who said drag? Yeah, you drag them. You drag them. Now it's on the top, right? I still want it on the bottom, but I'm showing you guys you can move these layers like this. Okay? All right. So check it out. I got my bokeh one, and it's not a good enough size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do Command-T. Everybody watching? Command-T. Command-T is transform. And I'm going to scale it a little bit using my option. And I'm going to move it. Oh, I like that one right there. Somewhere around there. Oh, I like that orange, the orange dot. You guys see it? All right. Yeah. Command-T. And the reason I couldn't see it all is because obviously the bokeh one I think was was uh, horizontal instead of vertical. And then once you have it how you want it, hit enter or return and that actually applies that move. All right, everybody there? This is totally non-destructive what we're gonna do next. You guys ready? All right, we're almost done. Check this out. Everybody listen up here. Pay attention, and then I'll, I'll pause and I'll go see if anybody needs help. Now, just like in Illustrator, we have blend modes or transparency for each layer. Okay, I'm going to show you how easy this is. You ready? Go to normal right here. See how I have the top one selected, bokeh. I go to normal, <clears throat> and then I start using some of these blend modes and see if anything happens. Look. Ooh, look at color burn. It already gave me a cool look. Already, I didn't do anything but select color burn. I didn't do anything but select a filter. I didn't do any crazy Photoshop moves. All I'm doing is selecting. Yes, find one that you like. Find one that you like. I'm going to do color burn. I like it. It's very, it pops on mine. Okay, then you go to the paint one and you do the same thing. And you're going to start seeing the Stormtrooper guy showing up or whatever figure you had kind of showing up cool through there. Yes? Find a cool one. We're not even doing anything crazy yet. I like this one. Hue for mine. All right? Cool? Everybody? You'll get different results with different things. So don't worry. I'm going to move mine in a little bit like that. Okay. Now here's the other cool thing. This is non-destructive. We're not destroying anything. We're not using the eraser tool. We haven't even used any of the tools except moving them around and scaling them. Yes? Pretty simple? All right. Now notice, if I go up to the color burn and I go right here on the opacity, that is how strong it is. So I'm going to tone it down on mine where I can see the figure a little bit more like that. And I'm going to do that to the paint one, too, a little bit. And I'm going to do a, a just a, just a, I'm looking to see what, what I can get here. A little bit of texture. That's all we're doing. We just have layers, and we made them transparent. That's all. And we're letting Photoshop do all the work. All right? I already like how this looks. I didn't even try. All right? We haven't even done any masking, any erasing. Right? All I did was place this stuff in there, right? At this point, I do want everyone to save this file, Command S, because we're going to wrap this up. We're not going to finish all of it, but I'm going to show you real quick what, what I would do. Untitled. And I'm going to call this, uh, on mine, I'm going to call it Trooper. I'll put my initials, an.psd. Always save as a Photoshop document or PSD first. All you do is, is it's automatic. Just hit save. Anytime you have layers, it's going to want to do that for you. OK? 
Okay, everybody there? Okay, check this out before we stop today because I know uh, Ty has to go check out information about a about a, a guinea pig, a free guinea pig. All right, you guys ready? Check this out. Now you don't have to follow along on this. I'm just gonna do it real quick and we'll do it together next class because it's gonna, I don't wanna take the whole class period. But you're gonna start seeing and the video will be posted. Now, once you learn how to do Illustrator, which you guys have, most of you guys have paid enough attention to be able to make stuff. You guys ready? Watch this. This is why it's so important to know both when you're first starting off with graphics. How many of you guys know how to do a pattern in Illustrator quickly? I hope everybody. Watch this. This is where you need to be a creative person and think creatively. And some of you guys already have that. Or even those of you guys who love to draw and have images ready to go that you could scan or take a photo of. Right? You guys watching? Uh, can somebody go see who that is? Can somebody get the door? Was that our door? Yeah, that was the door. Can somebody go get it? So watch this. I'm doing a pattern, right? I'm doing a pattern. You guys watching? All right, it's Mr. Sanchez, our counselor, everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. What's up, sir? Well, be one of them. Oh, a pennant? The pennant? Yeah. And then uh, we Ooh. have shirts, but. Okay. I'm not sure. One's an extra, extra. Well, the other's sure. an extra large. I'll, take, I'll take the extra, extra. No. No, it's. Oh, thank you, sir. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. Well, yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. Enjoy your weekend. Oh, you too, man. Say hi to the wife. Hi, guys. Have a great weekend. Yeah. Good yeah. All right, guys. So you guys watching? I want everybody to pay attention. Check it out. So if you're good with Illustrator, right, and you can do whatever you want in Illustrator, you've gotten that good, right, and you make a pattern, and I copy it, Command-C, and I go back to my Photoshop file, and I paste, Command-V. I'm going to do it as pixels. You guys see it? Watch this. I scale it. Use my option. Now, can you do this in Photoshop? Yes, but it's actually very difficult and takes a lot of time to do this kind of stuff. You got to hit enter. I just drag, cop. No, I actually copied and pasted. You can drag too, but I just. But I just copied and pasted from Illustrator. I went from vector in Illustrator and created it into pixels. Right, And you say, well, what's the big deal? Check this out. I can create as many things as I want in Illustrator that are very difficult to do in Photoshop. This would take a lot of time to create dots like this in Photoshop. And this is the part that I've even taught other adults who have been in the graphic design and they're like, oh, I didn't know you could do that, right? You gotta use logic, guys. You gotta use your, your skills. So check this out. So now I brought that in here into my Photoshop file and guess what? It acts no different than the texture we just got from the internet. And it falls under all the rules of these blend modes, right? I could do bars. I could do, I could go over here and do my, remember our simple effects that are built in, distort and transform, pucker and bloat. And I do that kind of stuff. And I change the colors around or I do gradients, right? Look at this. I'll drag and drop those two. That's a new one right there. Boom. And I can start layering stuff. Oh, but one thing is you can't change the, the physical appearance anymore. Right? Oh, yeah, you can. Yeah. Photoshop has a million different things. Check this out. If I go to Liquify, and I'm going to wrap this up because we're going to run out of press. Check this out. This is Liquify. Now, remember, this is this part I'm doing is destructive because it's mishmashing all the pixels. Look at this. Don't tell me, this is like digital painting. You guys that do Procreate and stuff. This is a whole other level that you can add. Do this in Procreate real quick. You can't. This is the only way to do it. Knowing Illustrator and messing with stuff. And now I say, okay, 
actually that felt good to do that and smash up those things, whatever they were, right? This is taking a little bit here. Shouldn't take this long. Come on, buddy. Come on, Photoshopy. Photoshopy. Yeah. Returning liquify result. Hmm. Oh, there it goes. This computer is very slow for some reason. All right. And I know we're running. Ty, I'll, I'll have you on time. Okay. Don't worry. We, we got till 39 or 38. I'm going to wrap this up right now. Come on. Sorry, it's taking a while. All right. So check this out. Everybody look. Oh, come on. Come on. This shouldn't take so long. Ugh. Yeah, they're laggy. I don't know why. And you know, I, I'm sorry it took a little while, but uh, you guys know I like to explain stuff and try to motivate you guys. It'll, it'll come together right now. Give me a second. Ugh. Come on, come on, it's going. I feel like grabbing the little progress bar and dragging it myself. It shouldn't take this long, it's really weird. Something's going on. All right, there it goes, there it goes, it's speeding up, it's speeding up. Come on, let's cheer for it, tell it. Come on, Photoshop, come on. Come on, Photoshopy. Come on. Come on, you laggy program. No? It's halfway. Come on, Photoshopy. Come on, baby. Andale. Andale, por favor, Photoshopy. Andale. It's going. It's going. It hurt us. Come on, tell it again. Give it another. Orale, pues, Photoshop. Andale. Apure ese sen. Yeah, this is not good. I, I'm going to have to ask our IT people why this is so slow. And we have video evidence of it being laggy. That was that was just a that was just a simple liquify. I should have done it like instantly on these new iMacs. Yeah, converting something to smart objects also just won't Yeah. It shouldn't. It shouldn't. Uh, it should be like I bet you on my laptop it's faster. Oh, I'm sorry guys. It should It's going, it's going, it's going. There it goes. There it goes, there it goes. No, no, it won't be five more minutes. Yeah. And right now, Ty, at, at, uh, at 30, you can go whether we're done or not, okay? It'll be recorded anyway. All right, guys, here it goes, here it goes. Sorry, shouldn't be taking this long. I'm going to call Adobe and show them this video. It might have to do with, with uh, EPISD IT stuff. Because, you know, this is all uh, cloud-based programming now. Right? Creative Cloud. Oh, it's almost there, guys. Oh, yeah, it's going. It should not have taken this long. Sorry. And I will reveal what we're doing right now, even though we're not going to finish it today, but you will. And then you're going to make one of your own. So uh, I didn't post this, but if you can, guys, everybody listen, write it down, put a reminder, bring some kind of toy. Don't make it, don't make it something too big. Bring something that you like from your childhood or you have currently. It could be a game controller and you're going to bring it to class and you're going to take a couple pictures. All right, there, it's done. Check it out. Everybody look, I hit return, right? Here's a filter. And I do the same thing. I can do all these blend modes. Look at that. Very cool. I'm going to go to my circles. I'm going to change those. I like that one. I'm going to lower the opacity. So it's not as, as obtrusive. I'm going to do this here. Okay. So I'm getting a cool result here. It's not perfect. Right? Okay. So remember the, the Star Wars stuff we downloaded? All right. You don't have to follow along. I'm just going to wrap this up here. Check this out. So... What you're going to be doing and finishing up this next class is you're going to be making a wallpaper or screensaver for this phone. All right. That's really what you're making. Now, most people say, why, Novo? Why are we doing this? Huh? Because what? No, I was just saying that just so you could Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll see. You'll see. So check this out. So these are ones that I did earlier. 
Check this out. These I did last year with my last year juniors. You guys ready? Check these out. This is what you guys are going to do. And some people say, no, why would you want us to do this stuff? What's the importance of it? So this is some of the stuff we did. So they're different ones. There's the one with my hand, right? Did you guys see the symbol and the Star Wars logo? I used the old school Star Wars logo last time. Here's a Darth Maul. And guess what? I only created one file and made all these different versions by just dragging and dropping and doing different, uh, different blend modes. And on this one, I even put signature and copyright and it fits my phone exactly or who is there a phone you designed it for. Okay. Now you would say, who wants this? All right. Check this out. Check this out. And remember what I was talking about earlier. Hopefully this motivates some of you guys. Let's go to Etsy. Oops. Anybody heard of Etsy? Guys, there's people and YouTubers I follow that make a living. And earlier, uh, Autumn's comment that called somebody a grandma, I'm not going to say it on video, right? Did you guys hear that earlier? Is there always going to be people that are grandmas that don't know how to use a computer? Always look at these people, people buy these. It's purely digital. $10.63 for a digital download, right? Now that one doesn't have a lot of sales, but watch this. Look at these that are all text-based. Check this out. This is a star seller. You guys look at these. This is a digital screensaver. That's all. Look at, they found a free font. There's one that says Annabelle, Annabelle. Right now, right now, listen, listen to this part before I let you guys go. Right now, you say oh, I wouldn't pay three fifty for that, but that's a that's a thing. There's millions of people that would. You could make money doing wallpapers. Somebody have a calculator? Yeah, yeah, I do. Four hundred and ninety-eight times three dollars and fifty cents. Yeah. $3.50, 3.50. Okay. No product, no getting your hands dirty, no buying anything, just using your skills on a computer. Don't tell me that you cannot do something like this. Now, some of you are going to say, well, I'm not 18, Noble. I can't have a Etsy. You can't have your brother or sister, somebody set up a shop for you or your parents and say, hey, I'm going to try and sell some of this stuff. Right? Of course you can. And and guys, there's there's people who sell I'm gonna say there's some that I can't show you here because they're they're not school appropriate. No, right? Look at these, look at these four dollars each for a digital file. This is the same person. You know they would look at look at it's a free font from the internet, maybe a little bit of illustrator. Look at that pathfinder back there on that O. They got the Vectizi flower from somewhere, right? Check it out. Star Wars phone wallpaper. Now here again, when it's copyrighted stuff, you have to be careful. But look at this. This guy will sell you the icon packs. This is, you do have to know a little bit of UI and use the, the free apps that they have to make the apps look like this. All right. Look at these, look at this. These are drawings that they put into the computer and then made custom wallpapers, eight bucks a piece. Tony, you have the, the calculator? Oh, yeah, yeah. 876 times eight bucks, yeah, yeah. times $8. It's 7, okay, this person has made $7,000 without 
without a physical product, only their skills and their drawing. And let me tell you, I'm not trying to be mean, but the drawings are so-so. They are. They're not like realistic. They're not well proportioned. I I could barely tell that this was, you know, the Darth Vader and Anakin half and half face. Look at actually, if you look, it's just cross hatching. Oh, it's got the names. They're they're letters. They're it's a uh, it's the artwork put together with words. Now that I look at it, all right. So don't tell me that you can't do something like this. All right. Okay. Look at, I did a Darth Maul one. Here it is. I did that one. Actually, I had it on my phone for a long time. Yeah, I did this myself in class. All right. Did I get the picture from the internet? Yes. Did I get the logo from the internet? Yes. But I just made it for me, right? No, I just made it for me, all right? So we're going to finish this up next class. Make sure you save your PSD file. Hopefully you're inspired to look at some of this stuff. I'm going to stop here. Ty, if you want to go over there with Mr. Hamilton, you know where it is, right? Okay. And go get that information. All right. Interesting. Anybody? Okay. Now I know some of you guys want to like, oh, well, I'm going to, I'm still trying to, 